Larry Titus, welcome again. We're so excited to have you when Leaders Live Together, our 12-part series, and it will be taught by both Debbie and myself. So we're really excited to have you. It's been an awesome time. Hope you can join us for every one of the chapters. They're really uh, very liberating, very helpful, very important. They're very sustaining and encouraging for marriages. And hopefully your marriage will be changed. And if you're not married, you'll want to get married. And, and uh, if you're living together, you certainly will want to get married because God has called marriage to be that perfect reflection of Christ in his church in this world. So strong marriages let the world see what Jesus and the church look like. Very, very important. We, uh, we have tremendous need right now to have an understanding of these basics when leaders live together. Understanding the principle of headship, understanding what the difference is between headship and leadership, because head is a responsibility of the band. Leadership can be a, uh, a proposition by both of the partners to varying degrees, but uh, there's various aspects of this. And so we've been covering these in the last several weeks. I want to talk to you today about uh, criticism and the destructive nature of criticism in a relationship, in the marriage relationship. I'm going to read a scripture to you out of Ephesians chapter 4. Uh, it says, and I'm reading now the International Standard or the English Standard Version right now. Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths. Let no corrupting talk, the word corrupting there, or nor, nor um, a worthless word or a word that devalues. It's the Greek word of sapros. Let no unwholesome word come out of your mouth. Let no unwholesome word come out of your mouth. Let me put that in the form of a commandment rather than a suggestion. Don't say words that criticize your spouse or for anybody else, but most importantly for your spouse, because they're the closest to you. They, this is the pearl of great price that God has put into your life and into your marriage, your relationship. It is the most important relationship that you have. Don't criticize your wife. We use the, the, uh, the words constructive criticism. I call that an oxymoron. There is no such thing. If it is a criticism, it is not constructive. If it is constructive, it is not criticism. Let no unwholesome word. Now, the Greek word for sapros means anything that removes the value from something. For instance, uh, the video camera that is, that is recording this session right now. If I put this underwater and it's uh, not waterproof or I leave it outside uh, where the elements get to it or it begins to rust or decay, anything that removes value, if I smash the lens, that is a sapros action. If my words devalue you, no matter what that is, speaking to you in a condescending way, speaking to you in a disparaging way, speaking to you in a, in a critical way, anything that devalues you, where you walk away from that conversation feeling less than valuable, if that is the case, then I have literally done what Ephesians 4, Paul says, do not do. Let no unwholesome word come out of your mouth, only those words for edification. The opposite of criticism is edification building somebody up. God has called me to make my wife beautiful. God has called me to turn her from the princess to the queen. Her parents delivered a princess to me. My responsibility is to deliver her as a queen to Jesus Christ, to provide her that covering, to provide her that encouragement uh, without criticism, without condemnation, without pointing up her flaws, isn't it strange what ability we have to see the flaws in another and never see the flaws in ourselves? So uh, Jesus said, if you want to take out somebody else's moat out of their eye, then remove the log that is in your own eye. So whenever we concentrate not on the negatives, but we concentrate on the positives so that we can then begin to bring out of them the gold, the purity, the beauty. Uh, don't look at the dross. Everybody has dross. Get over that. Make your life a life of edification where I am a builder. I am, Paul said, I'm a master builder. And he said, be careful how you build. So everybody is a builder or a destroyer, only two types of people. Our words will either bring encouragement, edification, or our words will be destructive and destroy the very thing that we are trying to build. You cannot have a strong marriage if you're continually criticizing your wife. It's impossible. You cannot have strong, healthy children if you continually criticize them. You can't have anybody around you that has any kind of confidence unless you have something inside you that says, I want to do what God does. 
God says, you're my beloved. He said, I love you, you're, you're great, you're awesome. God is continually pouring words of affirmation into us. <clears throat> In the final chapter of this book, I'll be uh, telling you a little bit about King Edward VIII, who abdicated the throne of London, England in 1986, uh, 1936. And uh, whenever I tell you that story, the part of the story that is really heartbreaking is that his dad had such little confidence in him. He said, I hope he never marries. And if he marries, I hope he never has children because we don't want him having children. We don't want him to be married. We don't want, we don't want him to be a king with a family. Can you imagine? What, what kind of uh, affirmation is that? Criticism is so destructive. You need to commit yourself today to this one point and make it a model for your life. Everywhere I go, beginning in my home, beginning in my marriage, everywhere I go, I'm going to be speaking words of life to people, edification, encouragement. Make it a duty, make it a practice. Change your life by changing the words in the way that you speak to people. Get rid of criticism. It is not a gift of the Spirit. I love you. By the way, pick up your book as soon as possible when leaders live together. We'll see you next time.